Jill Steinberg is a 31-year-old former teacher and a mother of two. It's busy being a mom. I think I was a little bit more prepared since I have a master's in early childhood education and I had a classroom of five-year-olds. I'm used to the chaos, <laughs> but it's so rewarding. In May 2010, Jill tested positive for a genetic mutation that dramatically increases the likelihood of developing breast cancer. This type of mutation is five times more likely for women of Ashkenazi descent like Jill than in the general population. BRCA1 is a gene that helps regulate cell growth, typically ensuring that cells don't divide or grow too rapidly. But mutations in the BRCA1 gene, like the one Jill has, can allow cell growth to go unchecked, forming tumors. I found out that I was BRCA positive through 23andMe, the at-home genetic test that my husband bought online. And he said, okay, here you go, you have to spit into this vial. I said, what are we doing? What is this about? And he's like, he told me it would be really cool, we'll find things out about our ancestry and we'll find out interesting traits. And then I forgot about it. Um, and then six weeks after Cooper was born, I had my doctor's visit and the next day, the results came in and John called me from work to tell me that I was BRCA positive. I thought my sister having breast cancer would be the closest I would get to breast cancer. Um, my sister and I are really close. I always wanted to do everything that she wanted to do. She did gymnastics, so I did gymnastics. She was a cheerleader, so I was a cheerleader. And we shared clothes, we shared everything. We're really good sisters. And it was surprising that here she had breast cancer, was going through so much, and yet I had the gene. Um, I was very shocked. Jill's decision to have a preventative double mastectomy came down to eliminating risk. The statistics are so high that in my lifetime, it's something like 80 or 85 percent chance that I would have breast cancer. It's, it, imagine you were getting on an airplane and someone told you there was an 85% chance of it, you know, of being an accident. You wouldn't get on the plane. You would do everything to stop yourself from getting on that plane. I think my sister having gone through what she went through and having the knowledge that she had helped me make my decision quickly. I didn't want to go through what she went through. I, it was hard for me to watch her go through chemo and radiation, and I just couldn't imagine myself being strong enough to do that. And that's why I decided that I wanted the mastectomy. I didn't know Brock. I didn't know about mastectomies or lumpectomies. I didn't know what I would be facing. So she was there with the knowledge, and it, we have this interesting shared experience in a way that has bonded us even more. The double mastectomy was rough. It was tough being away from my kids and I didn't know how to explain it to them. Um, Cooper was an infant. He was really, really young so he didn't know the difference which is what, another reason why I decided to take care of it very early on. Edie knew that mommy wasn't there and wasn't around. Um, so I wrote her a book about Edie and Mommy, and Mommy Always Comes Back. But I think the hardest thing for Edie was that I couldn't pick her up. So not only was there a new baby in the house, but Mommy couldn't pick her up. For me, the mastectomy was a no-brainer. Eliminate the risk. I do know from support groups that I've been in and other women that I've talked to, it's not always an easy decision. People are at different stages in their life. For me, I had my family, I had my two kids, I had a boy and a girl, I wasn't having more kids. It was an easy decision. Even as Jill continues to recover, her fight against cancer isn't over. Because women with harmful BRCA1 mutations can have up to a 40% risk of developing ovarian cancer, Jill is planning to have surgery to remove her ovaries. It's another daunting procedure, but one that will remove a significant risk a risk that she hopes her daughter Edie won't have to face.